Okay, uh, quick help here. Uh, the question is, um, how do I go about controlling the orientation of the things that I scatter on my object? There's lots of ways to, or in my terrain, there's lots of ways to scatter objects. You can use just a generic old scatter node and do it all by scratch, but Houdini's got a couple of nice nodes that are helpers to us to help us kind of build this out. So um, I'm going to start with the... Um, height field scatter node because I'm already using a height field. So I'm going to say height field scatter. And I'm going to go ahead and just plug in um, to my mask here because I've got a nice little mask generator for where I want to scatter my, my trees. And I'm going to change this to density using mask layer. I just think this is more intuitive than coverage. Uh, and we'll go ahead and take a look. So that scatters a bunch of points. And I'm just going to use a line, uh, if I could type, to represent my tree. The origin's at zero. It's growing in the Y. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make it um, 15 meters. These are tall, tall trees. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug those in. And it scatters my, my trees. And we can see, uh, based on where these are kind of landing, that as it goes up the slope, they're starting to lean over. If I was to adjust my mask here, uh, let it crawl up further up the mountain. We're going to get a lot more trees, but we'll see that they're growing, starting to grow sideways. Right? Don't want that. We want these to be vertical. So the easiest way to do this on this particular node is you come down here to where it says match normals with terrain, match direction with slope. Um, so let's do this. I'm going to put down a line, another line node. I'm going to leave it at one, but I'm going to put this in the Z. And I'm going to go ahead and merge these two together. And you can see that half my trees disappeared because the, the, the um, default behavior here is to use defined pieces from connectivity and I just want to use it as a single piece. So now that way we can see each tree is a, you know, a tree that points up and has a has like a little line pointed to its its Z direction. Maybe we'll make that a little longer and make it easier to read. So we'll make this three. So we kind of see what that's doing. Okay, so we can now see that when we come up on this slope, the Z axis of whatever the model is that we're putting in is pointing down the slope. Okay, that's because with this match normals with terrain means the direction it grows out is going to follow the normal terrain. The match direction with slope is going to point the Z of the incoming object down slope. So if we turn off both of these, we'll see that we're just growing vertically. All right, so now everything is vertical. The Z is pointed the same direction on, on everything. And you might say like, oh, well, that's exactly what I want. Eh, not really. Not really. So what we want to do is we want to come in here and um, usually what I'll do is I will go ahead and I will leave this match direction with slope. And then you'll see that these all kind of turn and point that direction. And that's great. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to randomize my yaw. That's that direction that the Z is going to point. So let's randomize that. Let's like say 83 and you're going to all of a sudden see that these start pointing in lots of different directions, which is great. So this controls how much rotation you're going to have around that normal, right? And right now we're not using the normal, so it's just rotating around Y, and that's what the yaw is. Randomizing up is going to randomize its uh, how much it's going to follow that uh, against that normal. So. We can combine these two, so it'll match with the terrain, and then we're we're using this as variation. But I don't on a tree, I don't want that at all. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. But then I am going to use just a little bit of randomization, not a ton, right? Just a little. That's too much. So I usually like three to five. I'll stay with three. It wasn't bad. But you can see there now. I've got just a little bit of variation in those directions. They're not all so CG perfect. Let's take it up to five. Just kind of heighten that so you can see it a little better. So there we can see that we've lost that. I'll even take this all the way up to 180 so everything's just kind of fully rotated around. And now that gives us trees growing on our terrain. Really simple, easy way to control.
Okay, now let's look at what happens if we have converted our height field. So convert our height field over to geometry. Okay. And now we're going to use the scatter and align node. You'll see we have kind of two different inputs here. We don't have a mask input, so we'll drop this on. And this is by coverage, so it's, it doesn't have give us that ability to change this, uh, I don't believe. So our abilities to change the mode is on the surface, we can um, add attributes from a point cloud, which is the second input, and scatter around constraint points, which I believe comes from this uh, second input as well. So in this case, um, I'm just going to turn this coverage down to 0.05, and let's take a look. All right, so sorry, I've got something else running in the background. So there we go. We've got our scattered field, and you can see it just is scattering across everything. Um, we can set this scale by an attribute, and because when we converted this height field, it picks up all of those attributes that we had on um, our uh, on our height field, and puts those into point attributes we can access that. So we have a mask attribute, so we'll use that to multiply against our coverage. So in this case, we'll come down here and say mask. It's going to go ahead and pull that in, and it should now drop those trees similarly to how the height field scatter node was doing it. And there we go. We can see that we now have scattered similarly to how it was before. All right, so how, how do we visualize now what's going on? So we're going to put down a copy to points node. Oh, excuse me, that wasn't the right node. Copy the points. Uh, we're going to put in the points that we want to target on the right, and we're going to put in the geometry that we want to copy onto those points on the left. Before I ever hook up anything, I always click Pack an Instance. Why when doing terrains? Well, because I don't want it to put a, a if this is a tree or a bush, I don't want it to put one of those into memory for each one of these points. You're going to crush your computer. So we'll go ahead and put in our, our little pseudo line tree there, and we'll put in our points, and we'll go ahead and hit update, and there you go. So now we have, just as before, we have these trees, and you can see that um, they're trying to do some fancy stuff. I think mostly it's pointing all the Z in one axis and following the, the nodes. It doesn't seem to follow the, the, the terrain uh, slope. Um, that comes from... Uh, in a height field, there's some attributes that help it to do that. So with this, how do we change, you know, its alignment? Uh, so we can come in here and we can say blend normal with Y. So this is the equivalent of saying just follow the Y. Where before we had a checkbox to turn off our Y or our uh, following the terrain normals. Um, this is like a blend, and so then we can do this little blend amount, um, and then for, I believe, this is the rotation on that attribute. Oh, it doesn't seem to be following. Um, we can now come in and, this should, this should spin those little trees, but it's not. So rotation around normal is going to be similar to what that was, or I think this is, there you go. So if we crank this to 360, we now have randomization on all of those. Um, I thought this was going to give me, like, similar to um, our randomize up. I thought that that's what this did. So I know that this exists in here, that you can come in here and, and uh, there's one of these attributes is going to do that for you. Again, I thought it was this. You could always just back down a little bit and inherit a little bit more of the Y or, or the normal. 
Uh, that's not my favorite way to do it. I really prefer using the height field scatter. So now we've got these points and the question always becomes, what do we do with them? If you are lighting in Solaris, do not, do not, do not bring in your copy to points geometry. It does not come in in a way that is um, as efficient as bringing in just your points and using an institute. There's different times and different reasons um, for using, uh, you know, uh, a full instancer versus, uh, I can't remember what the other version's called, but there's a, a different style, which is what this will do. This brings in a bunch of packed geos and it'll create, um, it'll create a, an editable version of each uh, instance, um, which is great, except that it makes the USD incredibly uh, cluttered and it not as performant. So if you don't need control over each one of these trees, you don't want to do that. That's not the way that you want to do it. You want to bring in just the points. So this is just really for visualization. Then you put a null or an output, you know, whatever it might be, and you would say out scatter, whatever you want to call it, and this is what you're going to be pointing at uh, inside of Solaris in order to pull these points and then instance your geometry onto those. But these give you the ability to kind of follow, uh, set, set the direction that you want, um, but a general idea for how, how to do trees, whether you're using the height field scatter or the scatter line. Again, I definitely prefer this method. I like that tool better. I think I like control of it better. Scatter and align has its benefits too. I just don't love that. Uh, I bet you, if we turn this off, does this now work? does that's there you go so you know this uh, <laughs> that's the reason why this wasn't working so I would love to be able to just take this and set this and then put a little bit of variation but I don't I don't see quite how to do that so anyway hope this helps